Well, hello and welcome to the, the last Crabby's Changing Room chat as we put out our double header of games, England in 2018 and 2019. You all have noticed that John Manson isn't with us today, but we are joined by former Scotland captain Greg Laidlaw. Greg, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on. Fantastic to see you. Uh, and a couple of good games to talk about. England 2018 at BTM and then England down there at Twickenham in an incredible game. You call it a draw. But that doesn't do it, the service it's required. It was it was an unbelievable game of rugby. Yeah, it sure was, Al. It was uh, very unique, uh, to say the least. Uh, as you'll know, it's any time you, you get to play against England, uh, it's a special occasion. I'm playing for Scotland, um, it's always a very tough game uh, down in Twickenham. And certainly, uh, half-time of the 2019 fixture, we were uh, certainly slightly worried. Uh, but fortunately, the boys are able uh, to pull that one back. Well, we'll come on and talk about the 2019 fixture a wee bit later. Um, but for now, 2018, or for, for now, even before that, you mentioned there it's a special occasion playing against England. What, what did it mean throughout your career? Or even as a, as a young guy growing up, watching those games and then having the opportunity to play them? Oh, it's just awesome, I think, that the whole history around the game. The, uh, it's a, the oldest international game in the world, so to, to be part of that history and, and to be involved in such a historic game is... Uh, is incredible, really. And I think, certainly, when I was growing up as a young kid, and that was always a game you know, you wanted uh, to watch. You always wanted to see that one. And, and to see Scotland try and get their victory was was, was awesome. Uh, so to be part of it was was brilliant. And I certainly always enjoyed the, the challenge of playing against England. Now, it's occasionally been thrown at Scotland that they make too much of the England game. And it's bigger than it should be. Now, I don't, I'm not an advocate of that myself. I think for all the reasons you mentioned there, uh, it's a special game of rugby. Where do, you, where do you stand on that one? Yeah, I would agree with you on that one, I think, uh, because it's, you know, England, uh, they're a great rugby nation, let's be honest. They've, got, they've always got strong teams, they've got great players. And I think it's just that challenge uh, going up, up against that when, you know, we're the, the smaller country uh, and it's against the old enemy, as, as we all know. And it's just that, that challenge to, to try and win that game is, is just an incredible one. 2018, uh, first and foremost. Now, we, as players, would always talk about the fact that the, the game doesn't just start when the first whistle goes. The game is from the build-up, the whole week and the preparation you put into it. But this game, maybe more than most, it started a little bit earlier. Um, in fact, it started in the tunnel, if all the reports are to be believed. Um, give us what, what you saw of that, that recollection you have. Uh, yeah, apparently it started in the, in the tunnel there, Al. Uh, one of the Scotland boys, I think, banged into, into somebody. But you know me, I'll, I was well out of the way uh, already by that point and, and uh, thinking about the game. So I'm, I'm not too sure ex exactly what went on. But uh, it was a little bit of a scuffle, I think, in, in the tunnel. Um, obviously, before the kickoff. So it was uh, we're going to be in for an interesting uh, afternoon. Oh, it's, it's, there's a lot of tension, a lot of emotion playing around. So then you get the opportunity to go out and, and get that 80 minutes in. Give us, uh, give us memories of the game. It was... One for me, well, for Hugh Jones showed his absolute best in a, in a Scotland jersey with a ball going forward. No, very much so. As, as always, uh, a tough test match, but I think we we got off to a really, uh, really good start in, in in the game. If if my memory serves me well, and I think that sort of just gave us that early confidence uh, going into the game. And, and I always feel that's vitally important for a Scotland team playing playing against England because, as I mentioned before. The, they're always a strong team. Uh, they've always got strong players, so you need to start well. And I think we, we did start well on that occasion. And that just gives everybody around about you the confidence that gets the crowd into the game early. And then, as you mentioned there, Hugh Jones, I think, was, was excellent on the day. He caused a lot of problems uh, going forward with, with the ball in hand and, uh, you know, and, and creating space for other boys as well. And, you know, I, I think you're going to touch on it. And, a little bit further on, but you know, helps when you got somebody like Finn playing as well and, and chucking ridiculous passes. Talk us through that ridiculous pass. Yeah, I think uh, it was one of the ones. It was we were quite deep in our own half. I think we were pretty much just outside of twenty-two. And uh, as my relationship sort of developed with Finn over the years, I always knew when he, he was he was keen to go and, and itching to get the ball in his hands. He, he used to just chuck one hand out, and that was the sort of signal he wanted. It so. I looked up, he was ready to go, so we just let the ball go and um, the rest is history. As I say, obviously, Finn's just looked up, I think. I think John, uh, Jonathan Joseph kind of stepped out of line a little bit and tried to 
put them off, um, as some defenders try and do. But Finn almost disregarded them and, and simply ripped an incredible pass over the top 20-odd metres uh, straight into the hands. I think it was Hugh Jones again, or, or Hoggy. Uh, and then we made, were able to make a bust up the right-hand touchline. And, uh, and we actually scored a really nice try off the back of it. And again, Finn was involved. And he chucked a nice little delay pass uh, to put, I think, Sean Maitland in, in the, the top left corner, I think. Well, you've got experience of, both, of playing nine uh, and ten, mostly nine through your career, but plenty at ten as well. Uh, you talk about the, the ability to control the game and the decisions you need to make. What happens when a nine and ten are on different pages? How did you deal with that one? Because like, you used to talk about Finn sticking his hand out. Now, I've played many times with Finn, and at times, <laughs> even as a skipper, I'd be thinking, well, what are you doing? And the good thing about Finn and a few other guys like him is at nine times at ten, it comes off. But what was the relationship like there? How did the communication work? <laughs> Yeah, it was good. I think Finn's so excitable and he loves to attack that I learned probably over the course of my time playing with him is sometimes just don't give him the ball. It was, uh, it was probably the best solution. Sometimes I remember we playing against Ireland. Um, I think it must have been 2017 maybe. And, he, you know, we never started the game too well and he was, he was calling for the ball in hour 22 and I think we were going to run it or something. And I was like, not a chance for us. Like, hold on a minute. I think we'll just kick this one and, and stay in the game. So, but it's, and I think that's just something you learn, you know, over the years. And he'd probably be shouting at me saying, you know, you should have gave me it. It was, it was on, but uh, I'd, I'd rather I'd stick to the kick on that occasion. So I think is you just build their relationships and coming back to the decisions, I think, uh, certainly coming back to that pass ever so slightly is, yeah, that was uh, just magnificent, you know, to have the, the speed of the vision, but also the accuracy of the pass to, to see that it was on and get the ball into that space uh, just allowed us to, to make that break. Now, 2018 would have been the last time that you played against England at BT Murrayfield. Um, how much of a, of a factor is that? How much of a factor is, is the home crowd? And you've touched on it already, but how special an occasion is it to play England at home? Yeah, it's awesome. I think that was probably something I learned again over the course of my career. I was... You know, I'm like I'm I'm, I'm passionate Scotsman, and, and, and sometimes you have to block that out and, and simply focus on the rugby. And definitely, uh, I was able to do that on that day and probably play one of my best games, probably against England, because you need to play well to, to beat them. Um, so, but it's, it's awesome, you know, driving into Murrayfield. You always get that sense of a uh, real connection with the crowd and stuff like that on that specific day, playing against England. So. But again, it comes back to the rugby. You gotta, you gotta sometimes forget who's in the opposition changing room if you can, and simply focus on yourself and and get the best performance out of each other. Now, it was a, a fantastic game of rugby. Now, in a strange way, it was almost eclipsed by the following year, which was a draw uh, down at Twickenham. Now, you were on a bench for that game. Talk us through what was going through your head in that first 40 minutes. I was sitting in the crowd, but I had clearly no opportunity to influence it. What are you thinking when you're sitting on the bench looking at that, that 30, 31-7 that was at half time? Yeah, um, I'm sitting here smiling now, but I wasn't smiling uh, in 2019. Was, <laughs> well, firstly, when I was on the bench, to be honest. And then secondly, um, yeah, half time when we were, uh, we were 31-7 down, I was... I was pretty worried, um, I think, as everybody else was. and I was worried before the game, if I'm honest now. I think, I remember, we probably hadn't trained well all week. The, the, the campaign probably hadn't went. How would I like to, like to, to have went? And uh, I remember getting down to, to England. Um, must have been on the Friday at some point for the, for the Saturday game. And um, We had a players meeting uh, the night before the game because I, I was worried. I just felt we were a little bit loose. And, I just said to the boys, especially after what happened in 2018, I was like, you know, England have been waiting for us for over a year. Uh, I think we just need to have a bit of a reality check here and understand what's coming at us tomorrow because they're going to be firing all cylinders. So obviously nobody paid any attention to that. And then, <laughs> and then we had to have another, uh, have another try at half time and, uh, <laughs> and go from there. Oh, it's funny, we were having the same conversations pre-game, but mine were in a, a bar over a pint. But I was, remember thinking exactly the same, that, you know, there was a bit of talk, even what had happened, as we touched on earlier in the tunnel before the game, it just added everything to the game, and it's a big enough game without any of that. And they came out, and everything they did, they did well. Now, Scotland, we didn't play well in that first half, but no. you've got to credit the way they played as well. 
Oh yeah, absolutely, and, and certainly, I've always had respect for for England teams the way they play. And uh, as I said, I, they, they were coming out to steamroll us in that game, and, and they certainly done that in the, in the first half. We never had an answer. We, we certainly never helped ourselves, but everything England done, uh, you know, it stuck. You know, talk about you know the past Finchuk in twenty eighteen. Like, you know, there were some excellent bits of play there from uh, I think Henry Slade and. And boys like that who who were on fire certainly in that first half, and I think you know in hindsight England were probably so far in front that actually helped us in the second half. That you know subconsciously they probably switched off a little bit. You know even at half time their message would have been you know let's go out and do the same again. But it's so hard to to recreate that. And I think you know our messages were were stripped back a little bit. Do the basics well, defend together, and uh, you know and claw our way back into the game. I think it's the, it's the emotional side of that part, isn't it? Like you go in at half time and you're that far in front. Um, not that either of us could maybe talk about it all that much in a Scotland jersey, but when you do get that far ahead and you're sitting at half time, um, to get yourself back to the same emotional level you were at before the game is difficult. But the reverse, from a Scotland point of view, the emotion, the, the, the direction, the drive for that second half. It's almost like we've got nothing to lose. So Scott can go out there and just just express himself, as well as having that that, that top two inches, that extra bit of uh, of motivation that sometimes is the deciding factor. Yeah, very much so. And I think that's when you need to use emotion uh, because sometimes it's dangerous. It can cloud your judgment, cloud your decisions uh, when you're playing. But certainly in a, in a situation like that it's you know we're not just representing each other we represent our country the jersey the people that have gone before us you know and it's certainly I know everybody in that change and didn't want to be the you know the team that got 60 70 points stuck on them uh, twicking them and so it's about how we stick together as a group and you know certainly whether that be myself you know obviously wasn't on the, on the field but I felt you know I still needed to play a big part and and making sure we got everybody back in the right headspace before we went out into the second half because there was still 40 minutes of rugby to be played and, and we could still impact the game. And thankfully, everybody that was involved, uh, you know, bought into that and, and we were able to, to claw back. And ultimately, you know, in a game, we, we probably should have won, to be honest. Uh, and again, it's, you know, credit to England. They, they stuck in there and, and they, they managed to, you know, get over the, the line at the end and score that try. Let's look at that second half and the performance elements that came. Um, Scotland just stepped up in every single aspect. And to your point around England and the lead that they had, they, they dropped off in a lot of aspects. So it was an incredible, incredible flip. But one that you just you very, very rarely see. No, you, you, I think you're not going to see too many test matches like that, um, certainly in a, in a Scotland-England game. And I think it was such a big momentum swing in the game. And... We just almost kept scoring and kept scoring, and I think we scored once, scored twice, and then it was like, oh, you know, we scored twice, we're still a fair bit behind, we'll just keep plugging away, and then it was like we scored again, and I was like, you know, crikey me, we're, we're, we're gaining momentum here, and if we score again, we're right back in this, and I remember when we did score, and, you know, all us boys were obviously celebrating and coming together, and you just felt that energy of the team. And you could almost see it in England players in their expression. You could see it in their eyes almost that the, the momentum had just gone um, from from where they were in the first half, and everything was with us. And they they started to go to a kicking game, and it's almost like you know don't lose the game now rather than you know, going out to win it. Whereas we were going out to win it, so it was such a such a flip in in the, in the two halves. That's what probably made the game so exciting. That's a perfect analogy. England started trying not to lose the game, Scotland out to win it. So talk us through the emotion when the final whistle goes because are you disappointed that you've not won that, uh, which seems incredible at 31 points to seven down or are you, or is there some part of you that realises that you know, it's been a massive game but we've actually managed to come out with a draw? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a tough, tough answer. That I to be honest, I, I was gutted to, to, to give England the, the opportunity even to to come back and, and draw the game um, because I think um, it's such a long time. Um, 1983, I believe, Scotland, you know, last time they won down in, down in Twickenham. And, and I think to have that, um, to be part of something like that would have, would have been awesome. And so it was, it was really hard for me to take, especially when I think, again, it comes back to that side of the game when, it, when small moments and big test matches 
and we probably could have just left the ball and, and one of the rucks we ended up giving a penalty away and letting England get up the field and it's just in these small moments when we've done extremely well to, to get back into the game is, is not try and chase it too hard and just back our defence and, and we, we let England get a little, little bit of field position and uh, you know they got over the line Greg, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you. It's two brilliant games that have been showed this Friday night, and thanks for your thanks for your insight into those games. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, up.